ओम नमो भगवते वसुदेवा Everybody knows English, yeah. Okay, good. So we're in the presence of the divine forms of Sri Sri Nitai Goranga. These two lords appeared about five hundred and more years ago in West Bengal. Mahaprabhu appeared in Mayapur Dam. And Lord Nityananda appeared in Eka Chakra Dam. Eka Chakra is also a dam. Some some people may say, "Oh, there's no Ganga there." Usually, the holy places are where the holy river flows, either the Ganga or the Yamuna, like that. It's at the holy place, but there's no. Place. There's no Ganga or Yamuna there in Eka Chakra. Eka Chakra is in Radha Desh. Radha Desh is the place where the Ganga does not flow. Anyway, it's a dam because it's also pointed out that a holy place is wherever the Pandavas stay. So the Pandavas, five thousand years ago, the Pandavas had come there. To Eka Chakra, and they stayed there, and there was some pastime there. There was some demon Bima killed one demon there. Who he was a real Rakshasa. They were making offerings to him regularly. So the Pandavas were staying at one Brahmana's house, and they wondered why the Brahmanas were grieving. The family was grieving. Then they found out. It was their turn to offer to the demon, and usually the demon would eat not only the food, but he would eat also the person who brought the food. He was such a demon. He was a real rakshasa. He ate human beings. So this brahmana, he was supposed to go there and be eaten by the demon. But when the Pandavas found out. And Queen Kunti said, "My son will go. Let my son go." So Bima went, and so Bima went with all the food which was to be given to the demon. And Bima, of course, he likes to eat food, you know. So he ate all the food before the demon came. And the demon came, and he saw there was no food. Ah, who ate all my food? <laughs> and then he saw it was Bima. Bima, there was there, and then of course he. They had a great fight, a great battle, and Bima ripped apart this demon, this Rakshasa. So that place is there; it's still there today, near just beside the birthplace of Lord Nityananda, just like fifty meters away from the birthplace of where Lord Nityananda appeared. There's the place where the Pandavas had stayed when they came there to Eka Chakra. Actually, Mayapur is a place. It said Navadvip Dam. The Lord appears in every yuga there in Navadvip Dam. In every yuga, the Lord comes. In the Satya Yuga, the Lord appeared as Lord Varaha. There's a there's a Koladvip. There, the place where Lord Varaha appeared, he was worshipped by a Brahmana who desired to see Lord Varaha, and the Lord appeared in the Satya Yuga in a beautiful white form as Lord Varaha. So then, also Lord Nishingadev also appeared. Lord Nishingadev appeared there in uh, that was. Well, Lord Nishing, after he killed Haranyakashipu, then he came to Eka Chakra. He came to Mayapur. He came to Navadvip Dam, and there's a place there called Nishingapali, and it said Lord Nishingadev came there 
after he'd fought with Haranyakashipu and after he killed Haranyakashipu and after he'd installed Prahlad on the throne, then Lord Nishingadev came there and he came there to Nishingapali and it was there he washed his hands. Well, some people say that, some people say, but at least he rested there. Some people say actually he washed his hands at Ahovala. So more likely he did, he washed his hands at Ahovala. And later on he came to Nishingapali on the banks of a holy river there, uh, and he rested there. And Devapali is also there, just opposite Nishingapali is Devapali, where all the demigods came, because Lord Nishingadev came there, and all the demigods also came to reside there, at that place, but while Lord Nishingadev was resting. There's a temple today there of Lord Nishingadev, an, an old, very old, deity of Lord Nishingadev is being worshipped there today. So that was in the Satya Yuga. And then in the Treta Yuga, the Lord comes as Lord Ramachandra. Lord Ramachandra also came to Navadweep Dam. And he went to the island called Modadrumadweep. Lord, Lord Nishingadev, Nishingapali, that's in Godrumadweep. But Lord Ramachandra, he came with his brother Lakshman and his wife Sita, they came to Morta Drumadvi in the Treta Yuga. And they were there in Morta Drumadvi. And it was there, Lord Ramachandra was looking at the beauty of Morta Drumadvi. Very beautiful, very green, many trees, very, very beautiful, many flowers, fragrant. And Lord Ramachandra was appreciating the beauty and he was smiling to himself. So Mother Sita saw her husband smiling and she wondered, she said to him, what is it? What, what is it giving you so much pleasure? And Lord Rama said, yeah, he said, he said, you know, I'm thinking how in the Kali Yuga, I will incarnate here in this place. And, the, and Lord Ramachandra, when the, he went on to explain to Mother Sita, in the Kali Yuga, I will come here in a, my most merciful form as Lord Goranga. At that time, you will be my wife, of course, you will also come as my wife, but I will take sannyas. <laughs> I will... I will take sannyas. And Mother Sita said, oh, you're laughing. You're giving you pleasure. You're going to go and leave me. You're going to take sannyas. So Lord Ramachandra explained to Mother Sita that, yes, he said, because by taking sannyas, he said, you will feel more the separation from me. And in this way, we will be reunited in great ecstasy. When Lord Rama and Mother Sita are separated, then it increases their love for each other. Just like when Krishna disappears from the gopis at the time of the Rasa Lila, Lord Krishna disappears from the gopis. So the gopis become more anxious when Krishna was with them and dancing with them, they were thinking very great. They're thinking, oh, I'm so lucky. Lord Krishna is with me. Lord Krishna likes me so much. Each of the gopis was becoming a little proud being with Krishna. So Lord Krishna doesn't like to see his devotees become proud. So he disappeared from them. And when he disappeared from them, then the love of the gopis greatly increased. And similarly, when Lord Ramachandra and Mother Sita were separated from each other, their love for each other increased and they were reunited in the spiritual sky. So similarly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appears and he has, has there's two forms. In one form, 
he is in his, his Vaikuntha mood, and in his Vaikuntha mood, he has a wife. But in his, uh, go, in his supreme form, he's completely renounced. He's sannyasi, and he doesn't have the wife. He's just in the mood of the devotee. He's experiencing the Radha path. So Lord Ramachandra comes in the Treta Yuga to Navadvip. And then in the Dwapara Yuga, Lord Krishna comes. Lord Krishna came there in the Dwapara Yuga. And he came at that time, 5,000 years ago, Maharaj Yudhisthira was desiring to do the Rajasuya Yagna. And in order to do that, the four Pandavas, not including Maharaj Yudhisthira, Bhima and Arjuna and Nakula and Sahadev, they went in each of the four directions and they went to conquer all the kings. Because in order to perform the Rajasuya Yagna, they have to have complete they have com they have to complete uh, subordination of all the other kings. So it happened. There was one king. Uh, what was his name now? Um, Maharaj Savarna Sen. I, I think so. I think Savarna Sen. He was a, a king anyway, and he was a great devotee. And he knew that Bhima is going to come, and he's going to challenge me. So the Suvarna saying, he decided that I will give him such a fight. I'll make him fight that I'll make him, oh, I'll, 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 I'll defeat him so that he will pray to Krishna to help him. Because Subhana Singh knows that if I can defeat Bhim, then Lord Krishna will come and protect him. Because Lord Krishna always protects his devotees. So this Subhana Singh, he had this plan that I will fight him. And then he'll be helpless. He'll pray to Krishna to come. And in this way, Lord Krishna will come to my kingdom and I will be able to get darshan of Lord Krishna. So this was the this was Subhana Singh's desire. So it happened that Bhima came and Bhima came and he told Subhana Singh, you should give taxis. We're going to do Rajasuya Yagna. Maharaj Yudhisthira desires everyone pay taxis to help for this Yagna. Savannah said, no, I'm not paying anything. You go. I'm not giving you any tax. So then Bhima got angry. He has to fight him. He said, all right, this is war. So Bhima and his army, they come against Suvarna Sen and his army. And Suvarna Sen, he gives such a fight that Bhima's worried. He, he's in trouble. He's thinking, how will I ever defeat him? Oh, I can't, he said, only Krishna can help me. So Bhima prays to Lord Krishna. Oh, Lord Krishna, please help me. I'm in trouble here. So Lord Krishna actually appeared because the Lord Krishna is, the, he's always bound by the love of the Pandavas. That there's always that loving reciprocation for the Pandavas because the Pandavas have so much love for Krishna Krishna always has so much love for the Pandavas. Any trouble Arjuna's in, Krishna comes. And you see what happened to Draupadi. Draupadi was in trouble. They were trying to disrobe her. Krishna came in the form of her sari to protect her chastity. And Krishna came for Bhima when Bhima ate the poison cake. The Kauravas had put poison in the cake. Bhima had ate it all, but Krishna saved them. Krishna saved Bhima. And when the Pandavas were put in the house of Shelak, again Krishna gave them the intelligence 
how to escape. So Krishna was always taking care of the Pandavas. And Bhima was in trouble. He was praying to Krishna, oh, help me. So Lord Krishna came there. And Suvarna saying, so, oh, Krishna's come. And when Lord Krishna came, then he didn't fight so hard. He said, okay, okay, now I'll let Bhima win. He was happy. He thought, my purpose is achieved. Lord Krishna has come. And he was able, oh, and Subhana said, oh, okay, okay, I, I submit to you. Take my taxis. So Subhana saying got the darshan of Lord Krishna in the Dwapara Yuga. And then in the Kali Yuga, the Lord comes in his most merciful form as Mahaprabhu. And he's simply chanting and dancing. So sometimes people wonder, is Mahaprabhu really the avatar for this age? Well, it's supported in the scriptures. It's in the 11th canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Karabhajana Muni inquired from, oh no, Nimiraj. Nimiraj inquired from Karabhajana Muni. Karabhajana Muni is one of the nine Yogendras. Nine Yogendras were, the, they were sons of Rishabdev. Rishabdev had 100 sons, and the most well known of Rishabdev's sons was Bharat Maharaj. But after Bharat Maharaj, there was the nine Yogendras. And the nine Yogendras, they were all Bhagavats. They were all living Bhagavats. They were traveling everywhere, preaching the message of Srimad Bhagavatam and the glories of the Supreme Lord. They were very great devotees. So in the 11th canto, you can read how Maharaj Nimi inquired from Karabhajana Muni about the Lord's incarnations in each age. In other words, the Yuga avatars. And at that time, Karabhajana Muni described how the Lord comes in different ages in different colors. In the Satya Yuga, he comes in the white color, and then the Treta Yuga comes in the red color, and then the Kali and the Dwapara Yuga he comes in the black color, and now in the Kali Yuga he comes in the yellow color. Not he comes. It said Krishna Varnam Tavish Akrishnam. He comes. He's Krishna, but he's coming in the color Akrishna. He's not black. Krishna Varnam Tevish Akrishnam Sango Pangasta Parshadam Yagnae Sankirtan Prae Yajanti Hi Sumeda Saha. So, this is the verse in the 11th canto Srimad Bhagavatam describing the appearance of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and how he's coming to inaugurate the Yuga Dharma. Because Karabhajana Muni is describing the Yuga avatars, so he's describing the, purpo the, the purpose. Actually, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's not coming only just to establish the Yuga Dharma, but he has other reasons for coming. And that is described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita by Krishna Das Kaviraj, who quotes from the diary of Swarup Damodar Goswami. Swarup Damodar Goswami was the personal secretary of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he was one of the very intimate associates with Lord Chaitanya. It said Lord Chaitanya had three and a half intimate associates. There was Swarup Damodar Goswami, Ramananda Rai, Siki Mahiki, and Siki Mahiti's sister, Madhavi Devi. They were the intimate associates of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. During the daytime, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would be doing kirtan, sankirtan, chanting and dancing. And at night, he'd be relishing the topics of Krishna in the association of his very intimate devotees. Ramananda Rai, Swarup Damodar Goswami, Siki Mahiti, and this other sister of Sikh Mahid.
So Swarup Damodar, he uh, observed every Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And he describes how Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that externally it appears he came to establish the Yuga Dharma. But there's a confidential reason why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came. And that was to experience the love which Srimati Radharani has for Lord Krishna. Because Lord Krishna is the greatest enjoyer. He wants to enjoy. But he found that when Srimati Radharani was there, she was enjoying hundreds of thousands of times more than he was enjoying. And so this was disturbing Lord Krishna that this Radharani, she enjoys more than I enjoy. And I'm supposed to be the supreme enjoyer. So in this way, Lord Krishna came again as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is not black. Although he is Krishna, but he's not black, but he is golden. He has this Radha Baba Juti Subhavalita. He, he's come in the mood. He's Gauranga. He's in the color of Srimati Radharani because his mood is that of Srimati Radharani. He's cultivating that bhava of Srimati Radharani. So this is the confidential reason for the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He wants to enjoy the pleasure which Srimati Radharani enjoys in being with Krishna. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes in that mood, in this Radha Bhava, cultivating this, or the mood, the mood of the gopis, you could say. The mood of the gopis is uh, the mood of service in separation. Vipralamba Seva. The gopis, they, sh they have that mood. They're separated from Lord Krishna. But in that separation, they feel the greatest ecstasy. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu wants to experience that ecstasy. And all the followers of Mahaprabhu, they all cultivate this mode of vipralamba seva, the separation from Krishna. One time, some devotees, they, 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 they were preparing a coloring book for children. And one of the pictures they put, the, the devotee was sitting under the tree and then he's saying that, oh, there is Krishna. Krishna is there. But Prabhupada looked at the book, he said, what is this? He said, this is not right. He said, this is not the mood of a, a devotee. A devotee will say, where is Krishna? He will not say, there is Krishna. He will not say, I see Krishna. He will say, where is Krishna? He will say, when is Krishna coming? So Prabhupada was training all of us to cultivate that mood of Vipra Lamba Seva, the mood of the gopis, service in separation. We don't say, now I am seeing Krishna. But we say, when will Krishna come? When will we see Krishna? So in that mood of separation from Krishna, we feel more intensity and more absorption in thought of Krishna. So the Sankirtan movement is a parallel pastime. Just like the gopis, they perform Rasa Lila. So, the gopis co went with Krishna in the night in the forest of Vrindavan. In the same way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu performed the parallel pastime of Rasa Lila by having kirtan in the home of Srivas Thakur. Every night they would meet in the home of Srivas Thakur and they would have kirtan the whole night. Nocturnal kirtan. Mahaprabhu 
came back from Gaya after being initiated by Ishwara Puri. When he came back from Gaya, he just wanted to do Tankirtan. He wanted Kirtan. He told all the devotees, said, let's not sleep at night anymore. Let's just do Kirtan. And the devotees would come every night to the home of Srivas Thakur and they would have kirtan the whole night. And in this way, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu didn't like to waste time sleeping. Prabhupada also said, he said, when I was a young man, I gave up eating and, no, he said, when I was a young man, I conquered mating and defending. He said, now in my old age, I have also given up eating and sleeping. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, before he took sannyas, he was in this mood. He didn't want to sleep. He just wanted kirtan. And he would go there to Shiva's Pandit's home every night. And they would have the kirtan the whole night. But only with the devotees. It was very confidential. They wouldn't let everybody come there. It wasn't a public affair. It was only for confidential devotees, intimate associates. If anybody who was not devotee wanted to come, they wouldn't allow it. There was one Brahmana who wanted to come, but he was a very materialistic fellow. He wasn't really a pure-hearted Brahmana. So they didn't let him come to the kirtan. So the next morning when he saw Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he took his Brahman thread and he broke his Brahman thread. And he said, I curse you that you will not enjoy material life anymore. So Mahaprabhu was very happy to get that curse. Of course, it meant later on he would take sannyas, he would leave the home and give up the, any material pleasure which is there. Another person who wanted to see the kirtan was the, the mother-in-law of Srivas Thakur, but they wouldn't let her stay either, although she was a relative. And then there was the, Brahm, the, the brahmachari who only lived on milk and fruits. He also wanted to see it. But when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu began the kirtan, he said, Jai Sri Nitai Goranga Ki. So they began the kirtan. Mahaprabhu said, something is wrong. Something is wrong. There's somebody in here who shouldn't be here. Mahaprabhu could sense that there was somebody here who shouldn't be here. So he stopped the kirtan. And then the brahmachari came out and he was humble. He was a hum he became humble, he became repentant. He said, oh, I'm so sorry. I just wanted to see the kirtan. Please forgive me. He said, he said you know, I, I'm just a, a simple brahmachari and I only live on milk and fruits. I don't have any bad habits. Mahaprabhu got angry. Do you think you can get love of God just by living on milk and fruits and by being brahmachari? He said, that will not get you love of God. Get out. Get out from here. <laughs> Mahaprabhu corrected him. Don't be proud of your austerity. Don't be proud of doing tapasya. But be humble. So Mahaprabhu pointed out this defect in the brahmachari that he was thinking he was great because he just lived on milk and fruit. But Mahaprabhu told him, you, you must be humble to get love of God. The goal of life is to get prem, prem punarto mahan. Don't think you can get that prem just by living on milk and fruit. That's not the process. You have to chant the holy name 
and you have to surrender to the Lord. So Mahaprabhu instructed this brahmachari and he rectified himself. So Lord Chaitanya was very merciful to so many people, giving them instruction, just like that uh, the Devananda Pandit. Devananda Pandit was another person. He was a, a scholar of the Bhagavatam, but he had no real devotion. And it happened one day, Srivas Pandit came there because Devananda Pandit had a, he had a school where he was teaching Srimad Bhagavatam. But he was not very well learned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. He did not really understand it. And Srivas Pandit came there and Srivas Pandit heard him reciting Srimad Bhagavatam and Srivas Pandit felt his bhava awakened. And when he awakened the bhava, different emotions began to be exhibited in his body. So at that time, the other students, they thought, oh, this person is disturbing our class. We'll get him out of here. And the students all got up and they grabbed him and they dragged him out of the, the room. So it was an offense. That was a great offense because Shiva's Pandit was a pure devotee. And he was feeling genuine bhav. And these people were manhandling him. Roughly, they dragged him out. And Devananda Pandit didn't do anything to stop them. And Devananda Pandit was their teacher. So he suffered the reactions. The teacher takes the reactions for the misbehavior of the student. So very important, the student has to behave properly and not let the reactions come on the teacher. Srila Prabhupada was very concerned about that. In fact, before Srila Prabhupada departed, he held up his arm, which was just skin and bone. He said, this is the result of accepting too many unqualified disciples. So, before we take initiation, we have to be very serious and very conscious that we are making a vow to strictly follow. And we don't want to simply burden the spiritual teacher with our sinful reactions. So, Devananda Pandit, he got reactions for his students because they disrespected Srivas Pandit. And Srivas Pandit was such a great devotee. All right, I think I have to stop here. It's getting late. We don't want to be too late tonight. Is there any quick question? Anybody has? Yes, you have a question? Well, there are rules and regulations for these activities. Pure eating. We just eat prasada, food offered to Krishna. And sleeping. Don't sleep too much. Don't sleep too little. Just sleep what you need to keep the body fit and healthy for the service of Krishna. Mating is something which is done to produce God-conscious children. And defending is done to defend the property of Lord Krishna. So it's not that we have to give up these things. 
but they have to be in Krishna consciousness. So Prabhupada was pointing out that at the end of life, you can give up this. The end of life. In the old age, minimum. It probably is old man cannot eat too little. Young man cannot eat too much. Like that. So it's different, different stages of life. We have to understand everything in terms of time and circumstances. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada ki. Go back to Vrinda ki. Hare Krishna. So we're looking forward to having a nice weekend. At least there's actually you're here for five days, I think, for the program. So we hope you will have a packed, power packed five days hearing and chanting in the association of devotees. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.